Hey guys, welcome back to Oak Abode. We are in the dead of winter right now. I was actually just working out in the yard and came inside to warm up. Because it's winter, that means spring is around the corner and with spring comes spring chicks. So I know a lot of people are going to be getting into backyard chicken keeping. Obviously it's something we're very excited about, but if you are wondering exactly how much backyard chickens cost, I am here to break it down for you. Everything I'm about to talk about, we did already post on our blog. So if you guys prefer to read instead of watch you can click the link in the description and that will take you to our blog but otherwise if you want me to just break it down on video that's exactly what I'm gonna do whether you are new or experienced with chicken keeping you could probably guess that the actual cost of chickens is gonna be highly variable depending on a few different factors I tried to break it down into kind of a very basic general case very similar to ours here are the factors that I chose for this backyard chicken keeping example obviously if you have more or fewer chickens that's gonna make a difference if you're gonna have a bigger, fancier, or a less fancy coop, that's gonna make a difference. But here's what I use to break down this budget cost. In this backyard chicken keeping scenario, we are assuming there are 10 pullets. We're assuming that they were purchased as chicks from a local feed store, probably somewhere around five days of age or so. We're assuming a backyard poultry location, so not necessarily on a huge farm and not necessarily in an urban setting with like two square feet of yard space. We're looking for kind of an average in between suburban setting. For this breakdown, we're assuming kind of average chicken care, so not anything really extravagant and not chickens that are neglected. They're having their basic needs filled, maybe a little bit more here or there, but it's just kind of average care. We're assuming the deep litter method is being used. I will talk about that a little bit more in a second. I'm basing it off of a Midwestern kind of Wisconsin climate because that's what we have, but that means it's warm in the summer and it is really cold in the winter. And finally, we're assuming they get daily time to free range a little bit, but not all day, and that they are fed plenty of kitchen scraps from the kitchen. That'll make a big difference. I'll explain more in a second. I broke down how each of these factors affect everything more in the blog, but I'm just going to dive straight into the cost breakdown from there. So obviously when you buy chickens, there are one-time expenses that you need to start up the chicken keeping. This is going to be the most expensive part of the cost of backyard chickens, so just prepare yourself. First and one of the most important expenses for keeping backyard chickens is a chicken coop. And for this price breakdown, I price it out at $500. And that might sound crazy, it might sound less expensive than you think, but that's kind of a good midline area for 10 chickens for something that is going to be safe in the winter, safe from predators, and obviously is going to function well. You guys are already familiar with our channel. You know that we built our first chicken coop from scraps from other construction projects. And because of that, it really wasn't the most efficient. It definitely wasn't the prettiest, but it did the job for about three years. We actually are just finishing up the brand new chicken coop, which is beautiful and a lot more expensive than the last one, but it is gonna function so much better. We'll be able to leave them for a few days if we need to. It's got an automatic chicken door. There's a lot more that's automated. So the new chicken coop that we built, it was more than $500. We will do a cost breakdown. But that being said, kind of for average run of the mill chicken coop, let's say about $500, give or take. Now, if you want to save money, it's a really good place to save money. You can build it on your own. I'm going to try and go through this a little quicker. So not going to detail as much with every point, but if you guys want more breakdowns on how I landed on the numbers that I did, make sure to click the link in the description to head to the blog post where you can get more details and maybe get a better idea for or what it will cost for your situation specifically. Okay, the next startup expense that is gonna be really big is going to be the chicken run. So if you're new to chicken keeping, this is kind of a safe fenced in area that is gonna protect them from predators and keep them from straying too far. For the chicken run, I calculated out $200. Next startup expenses are the feeder and the waterer. You can get waterers and feeders that are cheaper than this, but I calculated out $60 for the waterer and $55 for the feeder because that's what we have. These are bigger, they can sustain them for a few days if we need to leave and one of the biggest things is that the water is heated I'm gonna link everything for you guys below if you want it but we do love our heated water it's the only heated water we have found that work and it's a little more expensive 60 bucks but in exchange for not having to go out and refill the water every single day in the winter that is huge if you remember that startup scenario we did assume that we are getting baby chicks which means we need a baby chick brooder the first time I got chicks I used a heat lamp I will never use a heat lamp again there are so many reasons not to use a heat lamp, especially for chicks. Yes, you can do it, and most of them will survive 
survive, but there are huge reasons not to. I will probably write about that more, but for now you guys can just Google it. What is really best is to get a chick brooder. It is so much safer. The chicks really prefer it. So don't make the same mistakes I did. Skip buying the heat lamps, go for the brooder. And for that, I'm gonna say $55. Believe me, well worth the cost and the peace of mind that heat lamps do not provide. You are most likely going to want a chick feeder and a chick water as well, because the bigger ones are just gonna be too big and the chicks can actually drown with the wrong kind of waters. So I'm adding in a chick feeder for $7 and a chick water for 10 bucks. Another thing that you may or may not want is electrolytes. If you buy one pack of electrolytes, they usually last a really, really long time. Save a chick electrolytes are what I use. They really do help the chicks. Chicks are coming from a pretty rough journey a lot of the time. So these electrolytes do help prevent the chicks from dying. It helps their systems get strong again because these poor little babies have already gone through a lot. So I'm adding another 11 bucks for save a chick electrolytes. Another thing you're probably going to want is chick grit. So if your chicks are not out free ranging, which they probably shouldn't be at the beginning, you're going to want some chick grit. We get ours from our local feed store for five bucks. You can order it online for a little more than that if you're getting your chick's mail order, but I just added $5 for that. Chick food is gonna be about 20 bucks a bag, give or take. Again, if you can buy from a local feed store or feed mill, you're gonna save a lot of money here. The chick food sold at most like Tractor Supply and other similar farm and fleet stores, it's, it's quite a bit more expensive than if you just get it from a local feed store. So I calculated out $20 for that, which is what we get a really big bag of chick feed for. But if you're buying it in smaller bags, you might pay closer to 40. And finally, the most exciting part is the baby chicks themselves. And I calculated for 10 chicks, I calculated about $35, say roughly $350 a chick. Usually you can get them cheaper than that, but if you're anything like me, you're gonna see really fun breeds that are a little more expensive and you're gonna splurge a few extra cents on those ones too. So that brings the total startup expenses to $958, which probably sounds like a lot more than you were expecting if you are somebody who is coming here after seeing chicks at the local feed store for two bucks, a little fluff. And that is why I wanted to make this video because if you're gonna do chicken care right, definitely be prepared to spend a pretty penny in the beginning getting the right infrastructure in place. Now, if say, for example, you're only getting three chicks, you're going, only going to have three chickens, you're going to be able to cut down on the cost of the coop and the run quite a bit. That being said, if you're an experienced chicken keeper, you know it is so much fun and you are going to want more chickens when next year rolls around or even maybe before that first season is over. So in my opinion, it's really worth investing in the right infrastructure in the first place to allow yourself room to expand and then not having to replace coops over and over completely, which is going to be a lot more expensive in the long run. Next, what we're going to talk about are their recurrent expenses. So these are the expenses that you're paying for over and over with chicken keeping. Really, there are not too many of them, especially if you go for more of a permaculture. I know people hate that phrase, but permaculture way of keeping chickens. I'll talk about that more in a second, but we're just going to talk about what you might expect to pay every month to keep having chickens after you have the infrastructure in place. First recurrent expense is obviously food. So food, I calculated out to be about $9 a month, and that's because in my experience with 10 chickens, I end up going through about 150-ish pound bag a month and those bags are roughly nine bucks. You can get them for a little bit less if you opt for say less fancy food without as many nutrients, especially if you purchase it from the local feed mill yourself or you can opt for a lot more than that if you wanna get really fancy food. I kind of end up somewhere in between. So I get my chickens calcium fortified layer feed. So I actually have never needed to feed my chickens oyster shells. Their eggs have always been nice and strong. And a lot of that is because of the calcium fortified layer feed itself. If you go for more of like a cracked corn approach, that's gonna have a lot of carbs, a lot of sugar. It's not gonna have as much of the calcium and the extra additives. You're gonna save money there, but you're probably gonna have to make up the difference in oyster shells and maybe in chickens that don't lay as many eggs or that don't have as long of a lifespan. So my estimation is kind of somewhere in the middle. Yours might differ by a few bucks. Okay, the next recurrent expense that I wanna talk about is bedding. So for bedding, I actually only calculated $20 a year. For us, that equates to about four bags of $5 bedding. We get ours from Tractor Supply. I do prefer the finer flake and not the thick flakes because I find it works better for the deep litter bedding method. I won't go into it too much here. That is a whole different video, but if you haven't looked into the deep litter bedding method, I so, so, so recommend it because it is going to save you so much money on more bedding than you actually need. It's going to save you so much time on scooping every single day. I only clean my chicken coop twice a year. You guys can check out other videos where I talk a little bit more about how I clean out my chicken coop. I'll link them below for you guys too. But if you haven't looked into the deep litter bedding method, definitely something I recommend. 
then and to pay for the deep litter bedding method it's about 20 bucks a year next I'm going to talk about treats treats might sound like a luxury but they're actually more important than you might think especially the ones that I give my chickens which are insects my favorite kind of treat I use are black soldier fly larva we use the black soldier fly larva formula from a company called grub Terra if you guys want to save 10% you can use our discount code Okabode and save a little bit of money that way but the reason they're so important is because being able to ingest the proteins and all the micronutrients in insects during the summer is what really gives free range chicken eggs those bright orange eggs which have so many more micronutrients they mean the chickens are really healthy they're better for you too and they're so much better tasting so again we do that with grub Terra's black soldier fly larva and we find they really help give our chickens that extra boost of nutrients they were kind enough to send us a couple bags and ever since they did we've been hooked and obviously our chickens have been hooked as well so we add in those treats for about $13 a month for roughly four months out of the year which only adds on $52 to the yearly expenses but we find that it's really worth it they're also really good to use during the summer too if you're training your chickens to come when called which is really important we always just shake the bag and then they come running it's a lot easier than trying to gather them in ourselves all right the next recurrent chicken expense that you need to consider is chicken sitting if you have a neighbor that can just help out by popping over a few times when you're on vacation you're gonna save money that way we prefer to just pay someone to do it so we don't have to worry about it we know she's good with chickens she has her own and we wouldn't ask her to do it without compensating her so we calculated about 120 bucks a year say we go away twice and we have her come like two or three times while we're gone ends up adding about 120 bucks a year that being said we did just install the chicken guard door on our new coop which we are so excited about it's an automatic chicken door so opens at a certain time each day lowers at a certain time each day and even though the door is more expensive than just using a traditional wood door it's actually gonna save us money in the long run because we won't have to hire a chicken sitter nearly as much I feel more comfortable leaving the chickens for a few days at a time with their big thing of water their big thing of food and an automatic chicken door chicken guard was kind enough to send us their locking kit for the new chicken coop so I'm gonna link all that below for you guys because we really do highly recommend it two more things you're gonna want to consider for recurrent expenses one is medical care and I can only go off of my experience here a lot of medical chicken care you're gonna have to learn to do yourself there's a lot of internet advice out there that I won't give you but I will say I usually end up spending maybe 60 bucks a year just having to buy one or two remedies we haven't had any major chicken medical expenses but you're probably gonna find that you need to buy some salves or balms or powders whatever to keep them healthy finally the last thing I added in is damage repair so chickens are incredibly destructive they're so worth it but they're so destructive and they're gonna destroy your garden beds they're gonna destroy your lawn they're going to probably find your house and peck at that whatever they can destroy you're gonna have to replace they're so gonna have to replace mulch you're gonna have to replace plants if you're somebody who keeps your chickens in the run and in the coop only you're probably gonna save on destructive repair there but you're gonna be paying more for food so kind of averaging it out I added in about 10 bucks a month for damage repair because the, inevitably they get some of my plants and I have to buy nursery starts to replace them. So it's just kind of a trade off. Adding all these expenses together, the total comes to roughly $370 a year or somewhere around $31 a month. Some months are gonna be a little more expensive than others, but that's kind of a general estimation. One of the big questions with chicken keeping is, is it worth it? Do chickens pay for themselves when it comes to saving money on eggs? And I would add in fertilizer is the biggest money saver. I'm not gonna break that down in this video because that is a whole separate topic. I'm gonna make another video for that. But the chickens do save money for us in the sense that they lay us eggs, which are kind of comparable to the recurrent expenses cost. We save the most money with chickens by not having to buy store fertilizer. We make our own from their bedding, which is the best stuff we could ask for. And actually they're pretty darn good at pest control. We used to have really bad Japanese beetle problems and now we don't because the ones that come in our yard do not last thanks to these girls. I'll break it down more in a different video for you. One question you might be asking is if you live in a freezing climate, what about heat in the winter? Do they need supplemental heat in the winter? That is a super controversial question. You can Google all you want about it. I will tell you, we do not add heat to our chicken coops in the winter. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that in many climates, not all, but in many climates, 
It's actually more dangerous to add heat than it is to let the chickens acclimate themselves. I will say we did get a super cold spell where it was negative 25 degrees for like a week straight. We actually brought our chickens in a tent in the basement for a few days when that happened and I'm glad we did because people who didn't actually lost a lot of chickens. Ours made it through just fine, but for normal Wisconsin freezing weather, what you want is a dry coop, a draft free coop, a coop with good ventilation. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but I promise it makes sense. We'll talk about it more in our coop reveal video. Lots of good food for keeping warm. Again, another topic, but we don't add supplemental heat to our coops, and even if we did, we would never put a heat lamp in the coop, ever, ever, ever. I know a lot of people are thinking they've used heat lamps in the coop and they've been fine. Here's the problem. Even if the heat lamp is far away from anything that could catch fire, a lot of chicken coop fires have started because the chicken's feathers, especially those little down feathers, they float around. If you have chickens, you know that. And what happens is the down feather floats up to the heat lamp and either it catches fire or it starts to singe, falls back down to the ground and that's how the fire started. So if you do wanna add supplemental heat, I really, really recommend avoiding heat lamps, um, but I, I know that's gonna take some people off. But really in this day and age, we just have better options than that. More details on the blog if you want them, but I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> there are probably about three reactions to these numbers. Either it's, whoa, that's a lot more expensive than I thought it was gonna be. It could be, that's pretty much where I thought it was gonna be, or it could be like, wow, chickens are a lot cheaper than I thought they'd be. Whatever the case, if you want some ways to save money on your chicken coop, really quick, I have a few tips for that. Number one is to make your own chicken coop. So the prefab chicken coops are really expensive and you actually end up doing a lot of the construction yourself and the design isn't always what you're gonna want. So I'm gonna link some chicken coops for you guys below, but we have never bought a prefab coop. We have always built it ourselves, and that's what we find is best. Next thing you can do to save money is to allow plenty of free ranging time. So the more chickens free range, the more that they can get their own food. I think our food expenses are really low. For 17 chickens, we pay very little for food. And that's because not only do they get a lot of free range time, but we give them so many kitchen scraps. You do have to make sure that it's safe for your chickens, but we've been feeding chickens kitchen scraps for over three years now we've never had a chicken get sick we actually had multiple chicks get sick from apple cider vinegar and get sour crop you can use it if you want but after getting two cases of sour crop I stopped using apple cider vinegar and our chickens have been much healthier since but that being said the more kitchen scraps that you give them the more free-ranging time you allow them to have the less that you're gonna spend on food finally my last biggest tip for saving money on keeping back your chickens is to use the deep litter method like I mentioned I'm not gonna go too much into it here but it's basically a self self-composting system within the chicken coop and it actually removes any smell. All the bad smelling chicken coops I've ever smelled are ones where people kept cleaning them out every week. The deep litter method, if it's done correctly, if there's a correct balance between the number of chickens and the amount of bedding, there should be no smell and we don't have any in ours, which is much appreciated for us and for our neighbors. So that pretty much sums up my budget breakdown of how much it costs to own backyard chickens. Yours is probably gonna differ depending on your specific circumstances, but I hope this was kind of a good starting place for you if you're trying to figure out what it's gonna cost for you to start your backyard flock, which really I recommend it's totally worth it. I swear, they're so much fun. Nobody knows why, but they just are. Again, if you guys want to save 10% on those Grub Terra Black Soldier Fly Larva treats, you can save 10% by using our code Okabode. I'll link Grub Terra for you guys below. And then also that chicken guard door that we are obsessed with. I'll link that for you guys below too. Thank you to both Chicken Guard and Grub Terra for sending us these awesome chicken finds. If you guys aren't already following us on Instagram, our Instagram handle is oak underscore abode. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we would love if you would hit that subscribe button so that you can join us again in the future. Leave any questions you have about chicken keeping or chicken costs below. I try to get to those as much as I can. Also leave any advice you have to offer if you are an experienced chicken keeper because we can all benefit from learning from each other. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.